I asked people like what they would want help with. And uh, I think probably a uh, webinar script might be a little bit much at this point, but who knows? Um, I thought it was much, um, but Facebook uh, post copy, sales copy, et cetera. So um, can you give everyone like an overview of what conversion AI is, why you think it's superior to what else is out there and then potentially we can work through a couple workflows of the best ways to approach stuff. That'd be awesome, man. Um, you know, I'm a marketer by trade, direct response. Like I kind of grew up, I'm not grew up, grew up in my entrepreneurial years, you know, trying to learn direct response. I'm copying, you know, sales letters. I'm reading Halpert and Dan Kennedy and all of that. And so, you know, that was kind of my, my training. And, and then I got into software and we launched proof, you know, use proof.com, the little pop up in the bottom right hand, you know, of websites that shows how many people have bought or something like that. Uh, and you know, that was kind of my first foray into software and figuring out, okay, how do I kind of take some of these like marketing things that I've learned and turn that into a software tool that kind of does the work for you. Uh, and then, uh, about six months ago, we, we started working on conversion AI to, you know, basically use AI, train it, Oh, there we go. Vossler's here. Vossler's yeah. kind of the, the granddaddy of what I'm even going to talk about with like recipes and templates and all that. Um, Lauren also has good stuff on how to yeah, use yeah, it. Yeah, no, he's got yeah. he's got a ton of great trainings there. Um, but basically, it was like, well, how do we kind of teach this AI to write great direct response copy uh, and train it to not just write content, but like write stuff that's going to convert well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we kind of took, you know, this tool and started to like train it more and like what I would consider great copy. Uh, we've been able to get, you know, really, really good results. Um, you know, if you're a master copywriter and copy is just effortless for you, uh, I think it'll still be good for like creating ideas and brainstorming, just kind of like generating a bunch of different angles at once. Though, you know, obviously if you're great at this and you don't really need help, then, you know, it's not going to help you as much. I really think this is great for people that, maybe feel good about writing copy or content, um, maybe even not, but just, you know, want an extra, you know, hand in it. They want to help generate more ideas. They want to help, you know, get enough kind of different headlines than kind of piece and compile stuff together. That's kind of what I find is like the sweet spot for it. But, but even for me, like I, I certainly feel good about sitting down and writing a marketing email. I feel I'm not overwhelmed by sitting down and like writing out a webinar script. It's going to take me, you know, 40 or 50 hours uh, but uh, I, I know I can do it. And even I find this like super helpful to just sit down and, and do all that. So, uh, that's kind of, you know, why we created the tool and kind of what we created it to do. Uh, and then I've just seen, you know, a lot of folks take what we've built and like piece it together into something way cooler. That's what like Sean Vossler has done. He's way better at systems and organization than I am. And so we've kind of created all of these different building blocks and guys like Sean or Reed have kind of strung them together into these, you know, 12 steps to get a great sales letter or, you know, 15 steps to get, you know, a course outline or, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to kind of share my screen and, and talk through yeah. and, and walk through, you know, some of that stuff here so we can just get nitty gritty. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Here is, you know, the kind of building blocks of conversion. Well, one thing, Dave, just before you jump in, the because you said something, and I just want to, like, reinforce that. You know, like, for me, with writing, uh, I've written some things that have totally changed my life, that have, like, put me on the map, made me millions of dollars. But nonetheless, like, I don't really enjoy the process of writing, especially, like, when I hit any kind of snag. And so a lot of times I avoid it. Um, and one of the things that's pretty cool about a tool like Jarvis and conversion AI is that it really kind of, at least for me, who like, you know, maybe my frustration tolerance, my tolerance for frustration is a little bit lower than most. So I avoid work if I feel like I might get frustrated and this helps kind of make it okay for me to like roll up my sleeves and begin writing, knowing that I have like this tool right there kind of helping me every step of the way. It makes, it just lowers the barrier a little bit of what it takes mentally for me to get yep. started. And, and for me, that's huge. Uh, I'm, I'm saying it in a minor way because it, I feel like I shouldn't even need that help, but um, I imagine I'm not alone as far as entrepreneurs out there. When you think about writing copy, you're just like, Oh, 
And uh, this helps with that for me. So go yeah. ahead. And start. No, totally. Like I could sit down and I could pull out my swipe file and maybe iterate through 15 different kind of headline formulas. And I can kind of do that and like, you know, insert stuff, move stuff around. And, you know, I, I can definitely work my way through that. I don't really want to do that. So yeah, one, I'll probably just avoid it for like a few weeks. Uh, you know, two, when I sit down, like it's going to just be a little bit more painful for me to do that. And this just kind of will leapfrog over a lot of that. And this kind of knows a lot of those formulas already. And so you can just like let it iterate through a lot of those for you and, and hit up different angles, many of which I would never even have thought of um, because it's just, I didn't know enough about the customer, didn't know enough about that user base or whatever. Um, so no, it certainly helps me get started and then helps me come up with stuff that I wouldn't have thought of before. It's even better. Um, but yeah, so I mean, here's kind of, you know, we've kind of trained it on these different templates. I think of these as like the individual building blocks. And so let's just hop into one and just kind of get nitty gritty here. Um, give me a, a product or, or a service that, that we want to kind of have as an example here. And we'll kind All of right. do that. Let's take a look here. How about... Um, it could be anything. How about... Um, an addiction recovery post, or I'm going to give you the chance, the options, how to reduce inflammation, um, addiction recovery blog post, or um, a blog post using AI for copywriters. Okay. So let's do uh, like or, addiction or recovery. one last one. Someone else had a uh, recruiting and network marketing. Yeah. Recruiting. Let's, uh, I'm not crazy about that. I will just do a, an addiction recovery post. Okay. Um, and I've never done this live here. So we'll just kind of, you know, I like doing these where, you know, I'm not kind of like leading it down a route. I know we can land. Okay. So here I'm going to use AIDA first. Let's say, you know, we're, we're writing a blog post and we want to go promote this thing. And so, you know, I use AIDA a lot, attention, interest, desire, and action to like format an email or a social post or whatever. So let's say, um, I'll tell you, let's go step back. Let's say we're just kind of creating this blog post. I'm going to come to the blog section here. I'm going to take these, you know, blog post topic ideas. Let's say it's this addiction recovery. Let's say the product is about addiction recovery um, program. It's a 18 week addiction recovery program. Audience. You know, we'll just leave all that blank here. So this is going to do is it's going to take kind of what it knows about addiction recovery. What it takes about, you know, product description uh, about addiction recovery programs. It's going to give me some like ideas on, you know, maybe what a blog post topic would be. Okay. So maybe it's everything you need to know about eating disorders. Let's kind of take that. You know, now I could come to a blog post. We'll do a blog post title here. You know, it's so interesting because there's so many ways that you can come at this, right? You know, you could start with the question like creator, you could start like, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so let's do an outline here. So everything you need about eating disorders. We can I come up with like a blog post outline. So this is going to, again, take what it knows about, you know, eating disorders, takes what it knows about blog posts. And it's going to kind of, you know, help me put together a quick outline for it. So, you know, what is an eating disorder? How do you know if you have one? Why do people develop them? Who's at risk, you know, developing an eating disorder? What are the symptoms, treatment options for eating disorders? It's pretty comprehensive. Pretty good, right? So, yeah. you know, I could kind of take that, you know, pop it back into, um, you know, this long form assistant, which I'll show you here in a sec. But. Let's get back to this. So blog post, I think we called it everything you need to know about eating disorders. Blog post titled, everything you need to know about eating disorders. Product description, you know, this is a blog post called everything you need to know about eating disorders. It covers, let me just pop, you know, this in here. We talked a bit about the blog post here. Okay, and ton of voice, I'll just leave that blank. Let's generate some ideas based on this. And again, this is gonna help me create some copy to go promote this blog post, to go you know, post about it on social, drive some traffic there. Okay, so attention, eating disorders are serious mental health illness that can have devastating effects on your health. 
interest. You may be wondering if you or someone you know has an eating disorder. The good news is it's not always easy to tell the difference between normal dieting and disordered dieting, but there are some warning signs to look out for, like skipping meals, feeling guilty after eating certain foods, or obsessively weighing yourself and tracking calories. In food journals, desire. If any of these sound familiar, take our free self test now. We'll help you figure out whether or not you need professional treatment for an eating disorder. Action, take the test here. So, you know, if you're reading this, and I don't know anything about eating disorder programs or anything like that, so maybe some of the stuff that's not true, but you might look at this and you might say, okay, cool. I, I, I like some of what's happening here. I like some of the way that they phrase that. I like looking out for feeling guilt about certain foods. I hadn't thought about that before. You're going to be able to take a lot of that stuff and start to piece it together. Again, here'd be another one. Attention, eating disorders are a serious mental health issue. If you have someone you know, if you or someone you know has an eating disorder, it's important to get help right away. Desire the sooner you seek treatment, the better your chances of recovery. Action, click here for more information on how to get help with an eating disorder. And so this would be kind of the first place I would typically start just to get some ideas around like, what are the angles here? What are the different ways to phrase things? What are some of the different, you know, sentences that I might want to include and start to kind of piece these things together here uh, in order to kind of get some ideas. Now, if I'm also thinking through like how to, um, you know, promote this, you go to this marketing angles tool. I could do the same thing. I could do, Let's see, a blog post titled Everything You Know About Eating Disorders. I'm just going to do that again there. This is going to start to give me some different angles that I might call out or I might hit up. Um, okay, so this blog post will provide you with a clear idea of the causes and symptoms of eating disorders. Addicted to food, you're not alone. Eating disorders are real, and this article will explain everything you need to know helping understand the complexities of eating disorders. And so one thing I've done is, as I'm thinking about, you know, let's say again, I'm promoting this blog post. I want to send out a few different emails about that. I'm going to need some like different angles to hit on over a course of a drip sequence right. or different emails. And so it's like, well, you know, what would be some of those different angles that I want to hit? Okay. I could have an email, you know, talking about, you know, the causes and symptoms of eating, eating disorders. Um, I could have a, an email that's more about, you know, maybe emotional about, you know, are you addicted to food? You're not alone and kind of hitting on like, you know, the loneliness. Um, I could have an email talking about, you know, the complexities, you know, of that. I could have, yeah, these are just going to be different ways to hit on the same topic over and over. So I'll kind of come here and I'll start to like, you know, piece some of these things together uh, into, you know, at least different like, kind of folders in my mind of like different kind of content that I would create here. Uh, but again, I guess what I would, what I would um, highlight is I don't actually know about eating disorders and yet I'm probably 80% of the way there to be able to write some copy, you know, for eating disorders. Uh, again, I'd still want to like fact check this, make sure that this is, that this is right. Um, but I would never be able to sit down and talk about eating disorders and like write out copy at all for that. I wouldn't even know where to start. It would take me, it would take me a week to just get started here. Uh, and this is already kind of getting me, um, you know, started in that direction there. And the, I think, right. The, like Sean, like Sean Vossler's approach was like, he would have it create an outline. It would go to like the blog post outline. Yep. Right. Then from that outline, then he would do like, uh, content expansion or sentence expansion, like one of those, I don't remember which one, yep. like for each of those he bullet, like for each of the outline points and then use that kind of as the starting point, if I'm remembering correctly, is that kind of his process? I yeah, think that totally. So we kind of took a little bit of Sean's process and built it out into more of a flow here. And so let's say like, again, I've showed you some of the different building blocks and we could spend all day looking through different ones for Facebook. And as you're kind of like scrolling through those uh, two questions here, um, John Madison asked, can the software take existing copy and tweak it? And then the other question, so I'll just give them both to you is what's the difference between conversion AI? Oh, don't, if you can speak intelligently about copy pro, then go ahead. But if you don't feel like you can, then don't worry about it. I can deal with that later. Cool. I no. can't, um, okay. you know, I've heard. I've heard good things about it over the years. Um, I think you would know more than me. You know, yeah, it's not based on GPT-3. Um, it's older than that. And it's really just using uh, high converting sales letters as kind of the training material for their uh, 
you know, for their AI tool. And it's uh, kind of a hybrid, I would say, between AI and also like a template based approach, but kind of more than just templates, but uh, less than what this can do as far as this can do any kind of writing whatsoever. That is particularly geared just for um, sales copy and it's based on previous sales copy. And that's kind of the gist there. Um, the it doesn't handle most of the other things at all. And so, uh, you know, this is more comprehensive. That is more specialized and specific. That's how I would say it. Great. Um, cool. So let me just hop in here kind of like, let's put this together into a blog post. But, I mean, this is but really about cool. the other question, can uh, this software? I, I, I am gonna, I'm going to okay. show that how to like improve your existing copy. I'll show that a little bit better on the next screen here. Okay, so let's say, you know, describe the content I want to create. I want to write a blog post about eating disorders. This would be a place, I mean, you could also start here. I could say write a webinar, you know, script about this, write a VSL, write a marketing email, whatever. In this case, I'm going to say write a blog post. Let's say I want to, you know, put this eating disorders as a keyword here. That's going to generate some different titles for me. All right, this is like a bunch of, it's been trained on like what ranks high. So, you know, outsmart your eating disorder strategies to fight the battle, eating disorders, warning signs and realities, how to conquer an eating disorder, 10 things to know about eating disorders. This is pretty good here. So let's say, you know, 10 things to know about eating disorders. Now, just to get me started here, it's going to be able to generate an intro paragraph based on the title, based on the description, and based on, you know, the keywords here. It's going to give me a few options for intros. Eating disorders are often misunderstood and can be difficult to talk about. It's important for people who have eating disorders to know someone who has an eating disorder to understand the different types that exist, how they develop, and what treatment options are available. In this blog post, we'll discuss 10 things you need to know about eating disorders. What do you think about that, Rich? It's not bad. It's a pretty good start here. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, now I've got a full paragraph here. Okay, so now what it's going to do is, you know, I'm in, I'm in the long form editor. Basically, what I can do is, you know, compose and it's going to read the previous content and then it's going to kind of try to guess what would work next and like what makes the most sense as far as next words here. So go ahead and run this. We'll see what it comes up with here. Now, okay, so if, you go, if you go in and change all that, will it be, will the next writing be based on everything that you've changed? So yeah, so yeah, it just kind of keeps seeing what you're writing and then we'll kind of adjust from there. So here it kind of, you know, wrote out, you know, some different content, you know, about, again, these are kind of different angles here. It really what it's trying to do is kind of 10 things you need to know about eating disorders. Right. So this would be like number one, so number two, number three. Let's say I, I, you know, don't really want to do that. Well, what I can do is come over here into this power mode and I could like go back and get my blog post outline. Okay, so I'm gonna take my title, 10 things to know about eating disorders. Let me pop that in there. I'm gonna help me generate a quick outline here. Okay. So I won't read through all these individually, but let's say I just pop those in here. So the term eating disorder is not specific to one diagnosis. Okay. So now let's say I've got my headings here. I need one to tweak these kind of based on, you know, the audience and based on what you're trying to rank for and, you know, all of that stuff here. But let's say I had those. I can use some short codes in the tool to kind of help direct it. Let's go ahead and run this. So now it's going to take this intro paragraph. It's going to look at that. It's going to look at the title. It's going to look at the description. It's going to try to guess what I want it to write right here. And is that because you put the two hash marks there? The hash marks basically tell it that it's a paragraph okay. header, and it makes it more likely to write a paragraph below. Okay, so the term meaning disorder is not specific to one diagnosis. Eating disorders include anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa. Eating disorder is not otherwise specified in binge eating disorder. Individuals with eating disorders may, you know, it's like, again, it's unpacking that there. Right. And gives me, you know, pretty good stuff there. And I could write a little bit more here. You know, one of the most 
common. Let me go ahead and hit compose again. Whoops. One of the most common eating disorders is anorexia nervosa, which involves a person refusal to maintain a healthy weight and an intense fear of. That's a great example, actually, what you just did there. Like, you have this thought, like, as far as let's share what is the most common, you have no idea what's the most common. So you just kind of the most common and, and it will fill it in. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There's a lot of times I just kind of steer it with filler words or like, you know, like one thing I didn't realize about, and then like you generate and it like runs there or a common misconception about this thing generate, mm -hmm. it'll kind of fill that in. So I'm definitely like steering it more and more here. You can see it actually, you know, kind of repeated a lot of stuff up here and I'll show you how to, you know, actually reduce that. But you know, here I've basically got, you know, my header and then a pretty good paragraph without really having to do a lot of work or a lot of thinking around around that. Now, let's say you wanted to, you know, improve this. Or let's say, you know, in this case, term eating disorder is not specific to one diagnosis. You wanted to improve that because that was like one of the questions. How do I improve existing copy? Well, you could take any copy and you could paste it into here and then use some of the tools to improve it. So one, I could just rephrase this. So if I highlight and click rephrase, it's going to try to rephrase it. Eating disorders are not specific to one diagnosis alone. I can run it again. Eating disorders are not specific to one diagnosis. The term eating disorder is not specific to a single diagnosis. I kind of keep running this until I found like a, right. maybe a better way to say that. Eating disorders may come in many forms, are not limited to one diagnosis. Um, and another tool that we created was, you know, this explain it to a fifth grader. So I've kind of always found, you know, when I'm writing copy, I'm trying to like dumb down what I'm saying to make it convert better, to make it more appealing. And I, you know, I'm writing too big of words and I'm writing run on sentences and all of that. Uh, what this does is basically takes any copy and it converts it to the level of a fifth grader, uh, which I've found when I've done that on a sales page or a landing page or sales letter or whatever, uh, the conversions go up here. Yeah. Well, so you know, the best-selling business books of all time have all been written to a fifth grade level as well. Really? Yep. Perfect. Well, look at this. This took the term eating disorder is not specific to one diagnosis. A fifth, well, you'd say to a fifth graders, maybe eating disorders are not all the same. Right. Shorter, doesn't use the word diagnosis, doesn't use the word specific, much, much simpler. That's something that we've done before. Like when we're working on a new landing page, we'll like write out all the copy of it. We'll take all the copy and just paste it all into here just run through and just keep, you know, clicking on explain to a fifth grader until we get like, you know, something that's a little bit more simple. Eating disorders are not only one thing. Maybe it makes sense. Different people have different eating disorders. You can see it's basically, you know, simplifying the sentence. It'll kind of take out run-ons. It'll take out, you know, kind of complex sentences, make everything much, much more simple to read. And so that's something you could do as well. Just pay something in here, you know, and use some of these existing tools until you can get something that, that you really feel good about. Very right, cool. And uh, you might as well answer this because I'm sure this is a common question. Like, does it source copy from the net? Like, how does it actually work? I think. Yeah, it's probably... so basically, basically it's been trained by reading about 10% of the internet, you know, Wikipedia, blog posts, stuff like that. Um, so if you're writing about something that's like widely written about on the internet, it'll do fine. If it's something like super niche, it's probably going to have a little bit of a hard time there. Um, but then it's kind of taken that and it's learned the patterns. It's learned how people write blog posts. It's learned how people write Facebook posts. It's learned all those different things. And so we don't have like a bunch of like, like mad lib formulas, like running. Right. Uh, it's not like, you know, insert this word into this headline. Uh, it's more, it's read tons of headlines and then it, you know, comes up with a bunch of different stuff that way there. Um, but yeah, it's trained, you know, based on reading about 10% of the internet. And do you, um, can you tell what is the favorite, like what are the most um, used feature sets so far? For conversion AI? Yeah. Here'd be an example I kind of just ran where it didn't totally give me the right output. So it definitely is like a little bit of like, you know, a learning curve of figuring out how to kind of steer it. Um, by far the most people like use this, this, you know, long form assistant, you know, plus the power mode here where it's got all the different templates over here on the side. Uh, you're kind of, you know, using these, bringing it into here and then letting, you know, we call it Jarvis, you know, basically finish off the copy for you. Um, but yeah, these are by far the most, the most used sections here just because, you know, people want to write long copy, you know, I, I write my marketing emails in here. Um, all right. You know, all of all of our Facebook ads, I'll write in here. Um, it just makes it, you know, so much easier there. And the, um, 
just to follow up on the question as far as like, uh, you know, it's read about 10% of the internet. So Priya in Israel wants to know, is, do they have to, does she have to worry about plagiarism with it? No, I'd say 99.999% of the time. And we'll check, and tons of our customers, this, this, this question comes up all the time. Tons yeah. of our customers have checked all their copy and Copyscape and Grammarly and all the different plagiarism checkers. Yeah. Um, and it almost always comes back perfect. There are some times when like a different plagiarism checker will like flag, uh, you know, a sentence like when it comes to eating disorders and like that's the plagiarism. It's like, well, that sentence has been said, you know, 40,000 mm -hmm. times this week. Uh, and so it's never like anything significant um, because it's not really it's not really like it's not pulling like full articles or full paragraphs or full sentences from other sources. More so, it's like learning how those sources assemble their sentences uh, and then trying to kind of imitate that. So the short, short answer is no. Nothing to worry about. The um, And do you guys offer a trial at this point? Yep. Yeah, you... yeah, we've got a, a, you know, either you can either do a five-day free trial um, mm -hmm. or you can just pay up front and then we've got a seven-day money-back guarantee. Um, functionally, they're the same thing. Functionally, I don't want your money if it doesn't work for you. Uh, and we'll, we'd, be, yeah, we'd be happy to, uh, to refund you if you pay and then don't like it. I think those are just two kind of different angles that different people like. And the and then what's the monthly? Uh, we've got two plans. We got a base right. plan of twenty nine a month, and then a, a pro plan, which gets you access to the long form editor that starts at one oh nine a month. And do you anticipate that going up? Yeah, that'll probably keep going up. It's gone up. You know, we've kind of raised the price like every month or two since we launched. Um, mm -hmm. But then, if you're already on a plan, we're, we're probably not going to raise that. You know, on you. Right. So the sooner you get in. The, uh, the cheaper you'll be long-term. Got it. And what, like, are there any questions that people always ask that, you know, you might yeah, as well yeah. answer here? Yeah, people always ask about plagiarism. Um, again, the answer is no. People, you know, people want to know, does this rank well? And like, does Google allow this to rank? You know, one, I don't think there's any way for Google to know. Right. Um, but Google's smarter than me and maybe they will figure that out someday. And I think too, even if Google does know what Google wants is for good, high quality content to make it to readers. And so if this helps you write better content and write stuff that readers actually want to read, then Google might rank this higher because, you know, ultimately they don't care who writes or how it gets written. They just want good stuff for their readers here. Um, practically we've have a ton of people that are ranking a lot of content. Uh, inside of our Facebook group and existing customers that are doing, you know, far more content there, 10, 20 times more content they're writing before. Uh, and it is ranking. And so obviously I can't say anything about the future because I have no idea how Google will handle things in the future. Um, but I think fundamentally, I don't see any reason that it wouldn't rank. Uh, and, you know, good content is still going to win. Uh, and I think this, this, this helps you write better content, you know, as opposed to just being some article spinner. Totally That's agreed. A common one, um, you know, does it convert better, you know, on Facebook ads and, you know, stuff like, you know, high converting stuff. Um, I'll say this about that. I think any given copywriter could, and even maybe non-copywriters, like, like you could create variants that beat Jarvis. Uh, right. I think any copywriter, like you could like write 10 headlines and like, you know, you might, pick the one that you think is going to win, but you're probably wrong. Uh, and so I think what this does is it's going to give you lots of variations that you can test and lots of variations that you can tweak. Uh, I'm guessing if you created, you know, if, if you created 10 and Jarvis created 10, uh, there's probably a very good chance that like the, one of the Jarvis ones will work. But I think more than that, you might create 10 Jarvis could create a hundred for you. Uh, and now there's a very good chance that, that Jarvis will win out here. And so I think if anything, it just creates, it makes it so much easier to like test Facebook ads or test sales letters or anything like that. Uh, just because you can get so many more variants so quickly. And what about, um, can you do an ad? Can we do an example of a Facebook ad? Yeah, let's do that here. Okay. So I'm going to create another document. So let's say, you know, write a long form Facebook ad selling. What are we selling here? Uh, let's sell hair extensions. Promoting hair extensions. 
Okay. Promoting. Yeah, we'll do that. This is going to kind of take me down a blog post route, but I'll switch it up when we get into there. I'll do this direct response style Facebook ad. Okay. I'm going to kind of uh, ignore some of this stuff. We might use some of this, but maybe not. Okay, you're looking for a new life. You're tired of being stuck in the same cycle. That might not be a bad way to kick off a Facebook ad. Okay, so here it's kind of coming up. Let's see what let's see the row here first. Are you looking for a new life? Are you stuck of being in the same cycle? Do you feel do you want to feel more confident about your appearance and gain back some control over your life? If so, then I mean that's pretty good, right? It's yeah. like it's not just saying, hey, we sell hair extensions. It's like really going a layer deeper. And I think one of the things that people say to me without trying the tools they go oh this probably creates super boring unemotional like very vanilla copy and you know when i look at this like this is not just some boring hair extension ad like this is this is going into like your heart and like who you are and how you see yourself and tying it to gaining back control over your life and so you know, I'd say that's 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 a pretty interesting angle it's kind of taking there. And me personally, I would never start that probably because I'd probably just think, you know, okay, let's talk about hair extensions and the benefits right. and all that. Okay, so if so, then hair extensions are just what you need. Hair extensions can transform your look by giving you the length and volume that will take years off your face. You'll be instantly hooked on how good it feels when people stop com when people stop complimenting on how much younger they think you look when people I think that should say start complimenting yeah i guess it should be start right start complimenting. and if that wasn't enough hair extensions can help with those days when there's no time to style your hair or wash it uh, again these these are benefits right. i wouldn't think of uh i wouldn't know that like i wouldn't be like oh my gosh like this saves time like you know talk about like you know instead of selling features sell the benefits like okay right. like the benefit is like yeah you're gonna get out the door faster uh, you're going to be able to get to work faster. You're going to be able to go pick your kid up from daycare faster or whatever. Uh, with our 100% human Remy hair extensions, we've got all of your needs covered. So what do you, what, you know, you're the expert here. What do you think of that copy out of the gate? It's a good start for sure. And certainly something better than what probably you or I would come up with from scratch. So from that standpoint, definitely a good starting place. The, um, the, I noticed like, is the power editor relatively new or was that always there? And I just was completely ignoring it when I've been uh, using it. Um, it's, it's been around for about a month. So you might've okay. just kind of missed it. Yeah. Um, and that basically allows you to be working on one thing and then pulling stuff from other without messing up that third column. Is that kind of the deal? Yep, exactly. Yeah. So it kind of just brings all the templates into one. Cause we've noticed a lot of people yeah. Like Sean just had a Google Doc open as well, and they were kind of pasting everything into Google Doc and assembling it there. And we're like, well, let's just go ahead and have our own Google Doc. It makes total um, sense. So let's look at this real quick here. Okay. So, in addition to the natural, easy to care for hair you've been looking for, I mean, I love that natural, easy to care for hair you've been looking for. We also offer a wide variety of colors and textures that every person can find their perfect match. Hair extensions. Texas, they just kind of made up that name. Right. Uh, well, I guess yeah. it was in the I guess it was in the title there. Yeah. Uh, we'll be your new go-to company when it comes to getting all of your beauty needs met no matter what your age or gender you are our team is ready to help with anything you want we want everyone in the world feeling beautiful yada yada, yada. so right. you know now i might kind of say well i want to kind of wrap this thing up i think that i think that ad would work pretty well again i, I need to know more about the space i need to like spend a little more time on it but that's pretty good so let's say it's um you know hair extensions product um, our hair extensions are natural and beautiful let me know how to write a description but i'll give it a little bit it's going to kind of give me you know because it's red extensively on hair extensions you know it's read more on hair extensions than than you or i uh, will ever read <laughs> okay so you know now i've got some more angles here Looking for a solution for your thinning hair. Okay. Again, I didn't really know that was like, you know, the, ben you know, I, uh, I guess 
what somebody's looking for a pain point there. Um, you know, I could kind of use that. Have you been thinking about getting hair extensions? Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, do you want to look like a celebrity? Again, Doesn't. I I hadn't thought that before, but that's kind of a cool angle. Like this is mm -hmm. the thing that makes you look like a celebrity, you know. So I could kind of take those, you know, click this ad right now and purchase some of our high quality hair extensions today. Okay, so now I've got my CTA, mm -hmm. and I can go through it. I can kind of pull out, you know, a few of the different things that have interest and desire. And it's like, what, what I've got here is probably like a pretty good start for like a, right. a long form Facebook ad. And if I were to go load this up in Facebook, what I would do, and, and we've spent a good amount on Facebook ads, and I've run a lot of Facebook ads before. I'd probably load up three versions where all I'm changing out is this first hook. Mm -hmm. And the first sentence is the same. And I'm really going to test you know, maybe five to 10 different hooks and kind of say, okay, well, what's really making people buy? Like, maybe there's a lot more to this celebrity thing and I could really go deep and, you know, build out some marketing around like looking like a celebrity there. Uh, but it's like, this would just make it so much easier to test a bunch of different angles, you know, that, that may end up leading to me building out a whole new funnel, you know, around one angle or a whole new, you know, sales page around one of those different angles there. And if you change the tone of voice to like humor, would that radically change what it, pushes out yeah, yeah so i'll do this little, let's do funny here you can even put in people so like right. you know, someone put in um you know jerry seinfeld and like it started like you know writing more like a comic or i could put i could put comedian um sometimes you'll see it sometimes you won't <laughs> do you want to be a mermaid um well, all mermaids have long hair i've never seen i know totally hair. Let's do this. Let's do comedian. Somebody put in um, Billy Mays. You know, the uh, I forget what he was yep. promoting, the infomercial guy. And I guess it was like, great. Here, I'll do Billy Mays after this. We can kind of see. Uh, I haven't tested that myself. Somebody was like, it was hilarious. Um, hair extensions are the best way to get long, luscious locks you've always dreamed of. You know, <laughs> You, you know how you've always wanted to have long hair, but your genetics just won't let you. That might, that might yep. be a great angle. Again, I wouldn't have thought of that, but that might be awesome. So we'll do Billy Mays. Is that his name? Billy Mays? Yep. And while we're waiting for that, um, Hugo has a question here, so you can answer this question pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, can you give it the angle you want and then let the system write it? And yeah, she can. Yeah, so <laughs> basically anything you input is going to guide it, mm -hmm. you know? And so if I wanted it to, to really have an angle, you know, I might do this, our hair is natural and beautiful, you know, and I could say, and we'll make you look like a celebrity or, and right. will, and are the solution for thinning hair. Right. And that's going to definitely steer it down like the thin hair route. But right. If I really wanted to like, Force, I might say, hair extensions, product for thinning hair, you know, or for the celebrity appearance, appearance, or, you know, for those who can't grow it because they're genetics or whatever. All right. So, and that'll definitely lead it down that route. Um, our hair extensions are the best in the world. They're natural and beautiful. So you can wear them every day without worrying about damaging your own hair. You deserve to feel confident in your gorgeous locks that make you stand out from the crowd. I love that. It's like, it's, it's yeah. really hitting on the benefits. It's like, you know, do you want to stand out in the crowd? Do you want to show up better every day? Uh, you know, that's probably what people with hair extensions, you know, ultimately are, are, are looking for. Um, we have all types of, you know, colors, length styles, whether it's a wedding or an everyday event, you know, yada, yada. I'm tired of your hair. So again, Got this it. is the Billy Mays. You know, it's maybe a little bit hard to tell, you know, is this Billy Mays or not? But, you know, definitely, you know, kind of a direct response, you know, sales copy style right there. And uh, does it have the same ease when you're writing B2B? I would assume so. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's you know, everything that I write, um, you know, is B2B. And I'd say a lot of our customers, you know, are, are B2B. Um, it works great. You know, it's as long as it's a topic that's been written about well, um, you know, definitely writes really well here. Let's see. Uh, 
I had some, they were single grain, you know, a marketing agency. A lot of people are like agencies, you know, they're using this for themselves and for their clients here. Um, yeah. I mean, you can see, you know, I typed in a bit about like just a marketing agency, you know, you've been looking for a digital marketing agency that will give you more than just the basics. We know what it feels like to be frustrated with your current agency. That's why we offer personalized one-to-one -one service and a team of specialists who are experts in their fields. No account managers here. Our goal is to help you grow your business by focusing on what matters most to you and your company. We want to make sure that you have the best possible experience working with us to take care of everything from strategy development all the way through implementation optimization. And if there's anything that we can do for you, don't hesitate to ask. Click this ad right now. I mean, again, it knows a ton about marketing agencies. It's writing, you know, really well about that. So there's really no difference between B2B or, or B2C here. And um, where do you see the evolution of this tool going? Just getting better and better. I mean, this is really, this is really like just the, the first base here. Um, right. You know, I, I think there's still a learning curve, you know, and getting up and running. You know, as you can see here, it's not a huge learning curve, but yeah, you still got to learn, you know, some of the shortcuts and how to control it and all of that there. You know, as far as our tool, one of the next big things that we're working on is letting users build their own sequences here and their own, you know, templates. Like and like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Their own workflows that, you know, Sean could just create his 12 step workflow and then just share that with you. You know, not, you can use Sean's or you can use Rich's VSL workflow, you know, that, you know, just import that into your account and like run that. And so you know, we've definitely started off by thinking, okay, let's build these like personalized or these like building blocks. Then we'll take those once those are good enough and like let you stack them all together and do that. And so that's kind of where I see us being able to like tackle longer form stuff that, you know, it's hard to fit in one template and it needs some like guidance. You can do that with like a 12 step sales letter formula and just kind of like run each one of them, you know, one after the other uh, to end up getting some, you know, full email there. Very cool. What have been, uh, what have been some of the most like popular questions that you've gotten that we haven't come like that I haven't asked you and no one's asked me to ask you regarding you know, use of this tool from a marketing perspective. Because I imagine you've been doing a lot uh, as more and more people are talking about, you know, conversion AI. Oh, yeah. No, I just hang out in our Facebook group all day long and chat with people about, you know, various things there. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear, you know, any questions that people have, you know, kind of about it. And I think the big question people have is just like, will this work for my use case? Will this work for my industry? Will this work for um, cold emails? And I'd be happy, it might be easiest, I could show a few, you know, just keep going. I could talk about cold emails. I could talk about, you know, how to do SEO with this. I could talk about how to like write video scripts with that. Because I think it's a big thing everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say like nine times out of 10, the answer is yes. And that's because it really does know a lot. And it, it, it can write about, it can write deeply about hair extensions. And to me, that sounds like a fairly like niche product. I know it's probably a big industry, but it's like, that's like, right. that's, like that's a pretty like niche thing that it's like mm -hmm. effortlessly writing like tons of great copy for. Uh, and so the answer is usually yes, it can write about your thing. Uh, and then as far as like, well, can it write, a VSL script or can it write um, Pinterest pins or right. you know, whatever, whatever different thing you want to write. A lot of it just comes down to like your creativity and like your ability to like kind of walk it through and guide it through. Obviously, you know, we need to make it easier on our end, easier and easier continually on our end to do that. Um, but like one weekend, right after we first launched, like Sean was already writing like huge blog posts and sales. Yeah. Like uh, and, and, and most people were like, most people had no idea they could do that. They were stuck with that. Right. And like Sean was just like, oh, this is effortless. Like I can do that. So I think a lot of it comes down to just kind of your creativity around that. And uh, this, like, I'm curious what your answer is to this. Do you recommend always using it through the long form editor opposed to picking specific templates such as Facebook ad? I generally open everything in the long form editor now because when you're in there, I can still use the power mode to pull in the Facebook ad or whatever there. Um, but in the long form editor, I get that compose button that basically 
reads everything above and then generates, you know, a hundred more words for me after that, or a hundred more characters for me after that. So you just get more flexibility when you're inside the long form editor, as opposed to like just in a template. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like, I like hanging out in the long form editor and using the power mode. Got it. And um, someone asked me earlier, like about Write Sonic. Is there anyone that, is there any other company that you feel is the closest competitor to you guys? Like, yeah, there's, there's a, there's a handful of other competitors I'd say, and I don't, you know, I don't know about all of right. them or what I mean, each of them does. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, a lot of the other founders are, are nice people. Um, here's, here's a, I would say the difference is from my, my understanding is one, I don't think anybody else is really a marketer. I think a lot of them are software people um, that are kind of using this AI, but don't, don't know. They've, they've never run Facebook ads before. They've never written copy. Like, like we, I, our whole team is just like steep internet marketing. marketers. Yes. We're internet marketers, right? Like that's, that's, you know, I'm going to traffic conversion and you know, that, that, that's my whole game. And so I think we've known what good copy looks like and we've continually like squeezed the machine until we got what we would consider good copy. Um, and then we're also able to like teach how to use this to put together Facebook ads, how to do blog posts and how to do emails and all that stuff. And so it's like, I think we've got that, that training component on top of it, you know, as well. So it's kind of like one thing underlying a lot of it, I would say. Uh, from a more like product standpoint, you know, this is this is built on GPT-3. It's like the primary uh, AI model. Um, that's what most of these tools are kind of built yeah. on underneath. We are one of basically two that can write blog posts and long form content using GPT-3. Now, all yeah. the other ones have kind of spun up their own models or used GPT-2 or, you know, I don't know what all everyone's doing. Um, but there's a reason that all of these things came out in the last year because GPT-3 came out. And yeah. so it's like, if you're not using GPT-3, like you're using something that like has been around yeah. for years and no one cared about at all. And no one right. still like really cares. So it's just going to be like a much lower quality generally. Um, and so that's, you know, from a just product specific example, um, you're going to get the highest quality out of our like long form stuff than you would from anybody else's. That makes sense. Now Priya also asked another question. This is it here. I don't know if you like, cause this is interesting. The style of writing the demo is pretty much the classical formula. And I wonder if it can target also specific industry styles. So it will basically read and adjust based on however you're writing. Um, here, if I can share my screen again, yeah, I'll sure. Go ahead. Let me just change directions like a different style. So I think I've been like writing like direct response style stuff. It's like write a short creative story. Um, yeah, I saw a bunch of ads about like write your own ebook and whatever. Like, yeah, people writing yeah. books, well, they're writing nonfiction stuff mm -hmm. about Billy. Billy is a young boy getting bullied at school until he, you know finds a secret room who knows what that's about I'm, just, I'm basically trying to shift styles completely here yeah and okay. while you're doing that just real quick uh because lisa wanted to know uh this so it's not gpt p it's gpt3 and it's the most advanced ai right now regarding like content creation uh that's yep. out there yep Exactly. Yeah, GPT dash three. Okay, cool. So Billy has always been the easy target. He doesn't have any friends and he's always getting picked on in school. It goes back to when Billy was three years old and his parents had just divorced. One day after leaving a particularly bad day in school, Billy found an old door that led to a secret room with outdated technology for the 1980s. Let go. In this room, he could play games that anyone bothering him or telling him how stupid they thought he was. Now let's see this. Wow. No, I'll just run this here. So, wow, whispered Billy as he looked around the room. He had never seen anything like this. There was a vintage Pac-Man arcade machine and Atari 2600 with asteroids and Space Invader cartridges and Nintendo Entertainment. This is where his life would change forever. thing Billy didn't know was... that this room was a portal that would transport him to the year 2082. This is where he would grow up and get revenge on all those boys who had hurt him in school, yada, yada, yada. So you could steer this thing and basically you're just going to kind of like keep connecting plot points and keep connecting, you know, different sequences, you know, and have this help you, you know, build out 
uh, a whole story. I also have inside like the power mode here, um, there is a story, creative story template where I could kind of put in, you know, the tone of voice. I want to make it a horror story or a thriller or whatever there. <laughs> but you can see here, this is not direct response style copy. This is a story. But what even I found is like a lot of stuff that like works on social, like social posts or on LinkedIn, especially are these like more story type things. Like, let me tell you about the day I got fired or well, let me tell you about the worst day, you know, of my life. Right. Like that stuff works, especially on social also in, in copy, you know, and so I'll use these tools to like weave in personal stories, you know, into copy as well. Just, I think everybody loves a good story here. So it can definitely write, any different tone that you write, it can kind of follow that. What's up, Reed? Good to see you, man. Yeah, Reed. Reed's I've heard that Reed has done some really great stuff like Sean has. I don't know Reed, but I know Sean. And Reed has done a lot of stuff like Sean has as well. Oh, yeah. Reed's always putting, Reed's used this more than I have. He's always putting cool videos on how to do, you know, different stuff and use it for different use cases. So that's one thing cool about our community is just like a lot of people in there posting walkthroughs and trainings about, all these different things I've never even thought about, you know, they're using this to like post on, you know, Google, my business posts. I didn't even really know about Google, my business posts. All of a sudden we've got like a whole industry springing up in there. People like using it for that kind of thing. So and that's really cool. A lot of our stuff is now community generated. Very cool. The, uh, yeah, just read, uh, send me a message. I'd love to get a chance to meet you. And Molly Mahoney told me that there's wonderful things going on in the Facebook group. She actually told me I got to spend more time in that Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Molly people are delivering great stuff there. Yeah. Molly and Reed are definitely two of our, uh, two of our stars in there. I'll show you one more thing real quick here too. You know, for those that are thinking oh. about, you know, blogging or, you know, doing SEO stuff with this, we do this integration with a tool called surfer seo where basically what it does is it just pulls in you know one it'll help you kind of build out uh, like a content brief and help you kind of figure out like what does your blog post need to do to rank well so if i'm trying to rank for this keyword saint augustine grass this is one example i did it basically goes through and figures out you know based on the top 10 posts what does your blog post need to look like to rank um you know in the top there so it's kind of saying, okay, it needs to have, you know, between 1,200 and 1,400 words, have at least 37 or you know, 27 paragraphs, have, you know, 15 headings, have some images, and then include these different keywords here. And so what you can do is just as you're writing, you can just continue steering Jarvis to hit these different keywords and, you know, to talk about weed control and talk about early spring, kind of build everything out to the point where you are getting a content score of like at least 70 or above. So this is probably like the coolest integration that we have for like SEO related purposes. And I know some about SEO, but not really a lot. Like I would sit down and panic if I had to like write an SEO kind of focused blog post from scratch. Uh, this makes it incredibly easy to just like pick the keyword you want to go after, keep writing until you have 70% and you're probably good to go there go ahead and ship it without worrying about too much other stuff there. So it is definitely hugely, hugely helpful and super cool that, you know, the, the surfer team is integrated into our product too, for people that are looking at SEO. Yeah. So for that tool specifically though, you'd have to be a subscriber to surfer. Yeah. Right? You'd have to yeah. subscribe to surfer for this one here. And are there, uh, are you integrated with a whole bunch of other uh, different things is at this the, point or is, is this relatively right new? Now. Yeah. This is the mm -hmm. only one right now. We're kind of testing, you know, what that looks like to, to integrate and like bring more tools into our stack here, but people seem to really like it. So we'll probably do that more and more. Yeah, I, I think it is a really cool feature. I've never heard of Surfer, but it's something I'll check out for sure. You know, it's like here, like let's say, you know, how high you should cut, you know, it says in my header, I should have, you know, warm season grasses, warm season grasses. They will now, you know, give me a one there. Uh, you know, I've mentioned that one time and my score is going to go up a little bit here. So it just makes it super easy for somebody like me, even if you know SEO really well, super easy to just like hit that threshold there. Makes very cool sense. Very cool. People are blown away. They're loving it. It, it, it really is. It really is really cool. Um, you know, and, and test it out, you know, for free. Um, or, you know, you can just sign up for a paid plan and, you know, we'll give you a refund if you want as well. Um, I'd say like, 95% of people that try it are like totally blown away uh, and, and really, really do love it. Yeah. What other questions can I answer? Uh, 
let me tell you about the worst day of my life. Their AI marketing tricked me into spending all my money on self-help information. <laughs> That's it. Um, That's it. Time saver. Uh, how do, Andy Beard has a question. How does it work if you have 20 entities that must be used in specific sections of the page for semantic publishing? I'm not even sure I understand the question. Do you? I don't. All right, really Andy. Yes, different understand it. Um, but we also do have like different projects and you know, so people that are like agencies, if you also have different clients in each one of them, or, you know, maybe you have, you know, just certain you know, categories inside of your own company that you want to write, or you want to like keep your emails in one section, your Facebook ads, in another section, you know, whatever, you know, we do have the ability to organize, you know, all of that there. Um, and yeah, we're really just getting started. Um, you know, I think we've come a long way here in about six months, but you know, there's, there's so much. If you think it's cool now, you're going to just totally love what we've got coming up over the next few months. Very cool. Any, uh, you want to give us any hints of what's coming? Oh, I mean, or a lot teasing? of it is. <laughs> oh, actually, one thing I will say, this is a common question, just like, well, what languages does it work in? Mm -hmm. um, does it work in things outside of English? Um, we do have an integration with a company called DeepL, L, mm -hmm. um, which most people that are tr doing much translation like know about Deep L and kind of think of it as like one of the better ones there. Um, but we do let you translate with deep L and so I can't get to it here, but deep L has a ton of different um, languages that it'll work in. So you can kind of see any of these languages are oh, ones wow. that we can output in to varying degrees of quality. Um, you know, translation's tough, especially yeah. for AI because it's like, you know, do you want the literal translation? Do you want it to be a little bit more, you know, figurative? Uh, but Epel does a good job of that. Um, and, and, you know, people have been you know, generally pretty happy with what they're getting there. Um, but then, yeah, what's coming up, you know, as I said before, we're just going to make it a much easier to string these together, much easier to have a lot more control and to route Jarvis in certain ways um, inside of inside of the long form editor. Um, it, it's just going to be much, much easier. So we got a big announcement coming up at the end of the month on June 29th. Um, we're going to announce, you know, some big new features and some new, you know, changes that we've got coming up here. Um, I think it's going to make things, you know, two to five times easier to go get stuff done here. So that, that's going to be a pretty cool deal that, that I think will make it much simpler. Got it. And uh, so let's say someone has either already uh, like, you know, is on the free plan, has already bought, whatever. Um, what's the best way for someone to get fully trained? Is it to spend a lot of time in the Facebook group? Are there a bunch of training things that you think everyone should watch? Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you go to conversion.ai slash academy, here's where we're right. going to build out all of our trainings. And we're always doing more and more live trainings. We just did one with Sean Vossler, two hours ago about how to yep. land clients I um, on there for a short moment. Yeah. yeah. I go how to land clients and then you actually write, here it is, how to land clients and use Jarvis to write their copy. Uh, if you're not doing that, you know, as a marketing agency, you know, I think you're really missing out. We have one guy, Dan Kurtz, maybe Dan's on this. Uh, mm -hmm. He was running a Facebook ad agency up until January. We launched this and he thought, well, we're not a content agency, but let's try this out. And he started offering like SEO and content as an offer. Went back and upsold a ton of his existing clients. Uh, and then started landing a ton of new clients offering uh, like local SEO services. And he's gone from like zero to I think like 22 writers uh, on his team in the last five months. And just like totally building out this whole other arm of his agency. And so if you're an agency, this is like a great addition, you know, a great additional offer that you can go offer. Um, or if you're looking to start an agency, it's like a great way to just get going there. And we've got experts like Sean teaching us how to do that. Very cool. Uh, stuff, stuff like that. And then, you know, also this is a great training here, you know, how to use you know, intro into using the long form assistant, you know, for just kind of basic training, like that'd be the place to start. But yeah, we've always got a bunch of cool upcoming trainings. We've got a bunch of, you know, past training recordings and all of that. Um, and I'd say that's one thing we're really, really heavy on is trying to train you up in it. Yeah, well, it kind of goes with the territory because it's so powerful and it's so easy that it's easy for people to to overlook certain features that could make a difference for them. Totally. Um, do you know who, maybe this is another person that's using the... Oh, yeah, that, that's the guy I just talked about. Dan. Okay. He, uh, yeah. He's the one who went from zero to 22 riders. Oh, that's the guy? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
so and a lot of our training really is like community led i mean i i don't know i don't have 22 writers that are like hired and using this so i think you know we've kind of provided the tool and now like everyone's taking it out and all these unique and interesting ways um and then we just kind of bring them on to train them up on how to do google my business posts and how to you know write pinterest pins and how to you know again hire virtual assistants to write you know high quality copy with jarvis and all that stuff so there's a good chance if you're doing it there's somebody else in our group doing it as well you know that you can go learn from which is cool very cool in the name of the group um it's just our facebook group conversion.ai facebook community here there you go conversion.ai dash official community there you go so now people will know where to find it yeah very cool man go well, check this it out has been awesome. 